It was a sudden and excruciating end to a reef holiday. Ailey White was snorkelling off North Queensland's Fitzroy Island in 2016 when she felt a tingling sensation around her neck just above her lycra stinger suit. My chest felt really tight. I was struggling to breathe and my, li my limbs got really, really heavy. Um, and if I'm honest, I thought I was having a heart attack. A victim of Irukandji syndrome, she was placed into intensive care with heart failure. It took some months to fully recover from, from the experience. But not everyone who comes into contact with an Irukandji has the same reaction. Samantha Preston was swimming inside the nets at Palm Cove in Cairns last year when she was stung. My legs were shaking, I was sweating and my heart was racing. In her case, recovery was quick and she left hospital the following day. The biggest misconception is the fact you're going to die if you get stung by Irukandji. That is incredibly unusual. There are many species of Irukandji, including the larger moorbacker, which is native to southeast Queensland. But the most dangerous are the northern species, usually no larger than one cubic centimetre in volume. They literally swim along the beach. They have 24 eyes, so when they reach the other end, they turn around and swim back again. So don't take the kids paddling in less than a metre of water, think it's safe. That's the highest risk area. Last year was a bad one for Irukandji encounters. 48 Queenslanders were hospitalised, up from 10 in 2017. 14 people have been hospitalised so far this year, but most stings occur in the warmer months. The number of box jellyfish stings has remained stable. Professor Kylie Pitt heads Griffith University's Sea Jellies Research Laboratory, based at SeaWorld on the Gold Coast. Is, is there anything else like it in the world? Not quite like this, um, and certainly not on this scale. She's working with scientists at James Cook University to try to better understand the Irukandji's complicated life cycle. So the stage that, that sting people and that we're familiar with, they're called the Medusae, we know where they are, um, but we don't know where the other stage of the life cycle is, which is the polyp stage. And the habitat of the polyps of Irukandji have never been found. Irukandji have been caught as far south as Fraser Island and there have been unconfirmed reports of people being stung on the Sunshine Coast, sparking fears of a southern migration as water temperatures rise due to climate change. The real obstacle to getting heading south is getting around Fraser Island, which is a, a big sandy island which doesn't have great habitat for polyps. And We need to then set up a monitoring program so that over time we can see whether or not that southern boundary is actually moving further south. There are ways that we can do that, um, but we need the research to be funded. Because of their size, tracking Irukandji is incredibly hard, but new technology is available to change that. And we can actually really reliably detect whether or not jellyfish have been there by just taking a water sample and scanning it for the presence of Irukandji DNA. The technology could also be used as part of a beach warning system. Lifesavers conduct stinger sweeps in high-risk areas to determine if stingers are around, but the method isn't reliable. There are calls for local councils to do more. So you're actually ahead of the game, and that way you can um, actually know what the local threat is as opposed to guessing. In fact, much about sea jellies remains a mystery. Sea jellies are an important part of a healthy marine ecosystem, but their numbers are increasing along some of the world's most densely populated coastlines, impacting on tourism and fishing industries. In Australia, it's been a boom and bust cycle. This is amazing. Of concern last summer was the blue bottle invasion in Queensland's southeast, which saw lifesavers administer first aid to thousands of beachgoers simply gobsmacking and I, I, it took everybody by surprise including me. Scientists don't know how blue bottle populations will respond to increasing water temperatures but they typically live in the open ocean and are blown ashore. We've had a, a lot of northlies already um, you know with uh, August, October um, and we're expecting more northlies um, you know from, from now till Christmas. Ailey White's near-death Irukandji experience won't keep her out of the ocean. But I always now go into that activity knowing what the risk is. Scientists say their research could make those calculations easier for everyone. Daya Clark, ABC News.